and transcription. Enable. Oh, thank you. I remember now there's just, I remember there's two things I need to do at the That's start right. of the EKS call. There's a couple of risk calls that uh, start 20 minutes in because I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> After all the good stuff. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, welcome to uh, March 1st. Hooray. We've made it through two months already of 2022. So good for us. Um, community call. We, we are here same time, same place every week. And uh, the minutes have been dropped in the chat, but if you need them again, just give us a shout. If you wanna, of course, put your name down under attendees, you can, you do not have to do that. And as always, you do not have to turn your camera on. We don't care here, it's casual. We're just gonna hang out and chat about chaos stuff for a little bit. So um, you can check your email, it's totally fine. We don't care, it's, it's multitasking. And I'm, I'm actually envious that you can do that because I cannot. So good for you. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, I, have, I have changed my venue today. I, the, I was not feeling the office. It is really nice outside. So as soon as this meeting's over, I'm probably going to go out there. I'm very yeah. excited about that. We so went from ice last week to same. it's yeah. 70 all week. Yeah. Right. I'm down for it. I'm ready to go outside now. I'm ready to leave my abode for the first time in, I don't know, months, but it's good. Okay um let's look at the agenda here shall we shall we do stuff there we go i'll move the chat window over oops that's not what i want i'm always afraid i'm not going to see the chat there we go yeah now i'll see it right. okay uh first thing on the agenda is probably our biggest topic maybe i don't know maybe not metrics freeze started so starts today uh, i guess so um, for those who are new to chaos, what we do is twice a year, we um, release a group of metrics together that we've developed either new or if we've revised any, we lump them all together when we put them out there as an as a official release to say these are our metrics now that you can use and run with and have fun with. So um, that time is now. Before we do that release, we have a 30 day public comment period where um, anybody they don't necessarily even have to be in the chaos community officially um, can just comment on some of these um, some of our or any of our metrics that we have as candidate releases release candidates release yeah release candidates um so that period starts technically today um the month of month of march and then we'll end that and then we'll package everything up and put it out in a nice little pdf um, that is beautiful um they will be added to this website here, I don't think they're there quite yet, but they will be, because um, that literally is just happening like right now. So give us give us a little, um, but there'll be a little tag and a link to where you can provide feedback for that metric. So that's how that works. I think we might have had one for the common metric working group that we didn't quite hit the deadline. Matt, I think that was the one you were working on. Yeah. Is it too late to squeeze that one in, or um, it's not. I think it's okay, but I'm looking at Kevin. Uh, no, it's it's not too late. Okay, thank I thought you. He was going to say no. It's not okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, no, Dawn. The deadline applies not. to you, just like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that special, Dawn. Okay. Uh, there are a few. I mean, there are a few. There's one I'm working on right now in evolution. Like it's done. The PR just needs to be merged, and then I have to get it in the translations repo. So there's. It's, that's kind of where this other one is, Don, that you're referring to. Like it, the it just needs to be made into a PR, you know, and then the issue updated for episodic contributors. Okay. So, and I honestly, I can do that today. I have time after this meeting. Oh, that would be fabulous. Yeah. So I, I was going to pull these to the website today. So I've been making a list and double checking that everything is where it needs to be. Uh, but I am going to. Uh, I'm actually, I, I'm going to give you to the end of the day till I do that. So I'll, I'll, I'll pull these to the website tomorrow. That'd be okay. good. Thanks. So. Yeah. yeah. Let me know if uh, evolution, I mean, Vinod did evolution and risk, and I think he did one other one. I did of... for the uh, value also. Like oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Four, four or five. Thank you, Vinod. Vinod's carried a load of all the release processes this time. So thank you. Yeah, the, the, the metrics releases in the working group repositories all look pretty uh, good. 
Uh, we are missing a few metrics in the translations repo, though. So yeah. if, if, you haven't, if, you haven't, if you haven't pulled those into the translations repo yet, please do so. I haven't put it in the translation because it the pull request was not merged, so I didn't have the exact like link to refer it. That's why I was waiting. I have not check marked that in the to do list, so I was yeah. waiting. Once it is merged, then I'll create a issue for translation. That, that's that's fair. So uh, so I, I suppose I would I would encourage any working groups if you have open PRs for these metrics, please please go and review them and uh, and uh, merge them. Right on. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, we have a nice little group. I'm, I'm surprised at how many metrics we are gonna have, all things considered, because we had like the end of year break and we're also reviewing old metrics and we also have some operational stuff we've been working on. So um, there's other things and we're still cranking them out. So good for us, everybody should be proud. Uh, any other questions, comments, concerns? Anything about this? I guess I have this like just kind of ongoing concern when we get to a release now is we we just have a lot of metrics and uh, the balance between releasing new metrics and reviewing old metrics like I'm, this this seems to be widening every time and that does cause me stress and I know that we're supposed to be releasing metrics obviously as a chaos working group, but that just stresses me out a little bit. <laughs> so that's all. I, uh, I agree with that. And uh, by, I think there, there ends up being a kind of a, a gulf in the language that's used in the older metrics versus the newer metrics because we're not reviewing them. So it, it kind of gets to a point where like some of those older metrics, I don't have a, I don't have a whole lot of uh, trust in some of the older metrics because we haven't reviewed them. I mean, I have trust in their basic utility, I suppose you could say. So our strategy thus far has been to leave it to the working group to figure out their cadence of viewing old methods. Um, do we want to have something a little more strategic in place? It's like where it's, you know, there's a separate group that works on them only yeah. or something I mean, basically it's our technical debt that we're trying to solve so and it's like the age-old problem of how do you balance technical debt with new stuff so <laughs> right and then uh, we do a release and i'm like ah! <laughs> that got worse yeah <laughs> um uh yes i think we need to do something and i think we might even need to think about like what uh reevaluation process looks like so like if it's a metric from, you know, when we first started right now, it's a fairly heavyweight process. If there are substantial changes to it, it's, it's basically the same as a, uh, a new release of a metric, which, you know, that's, I don't know, maybe something in between of maybe a full review, but not just a all looks good, you know, just trust us kind of thing. I don't know, but yeah, I I think like we, that I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I feel like I, I would be open to like more of a structured focus time on only reviews. Because I think in the risk working group, we had kind of realized we were coming up to a release and it was sort of like, do we want to spend our time on this metric that we're developing or do we want to spend some time looking at our old metrics? Um, or, or are we going to delegate that to like personal time or like non meeting time? Um, and we have to do, do the shiny new thing. <laughs> Which isn't great for your your point on just sort of like we're incurring more technical debt. So like I don't know. I feel like given that it's it's never as fun to go back and rehash versus create something new. That if we have more dedicated structure time to it, then that it's sort of like we're just making this one set of meetings or like two week period where we're just doing reviews. Uh, to be honest, I when we when we talked about doing the review. And we talked about doing it on this release cycle. I had anticipated less metrics being released this round, and and considerably more work being done on the uh, the uh, reviewing the old metrics. Uh, so, yeah, we had good intentions to do that in the common working group, and then I I think we didn't for whatever reason. 
I think that's the sentiment across working groups, at least the ones I've seen, like where it's, yeah, it's on the list, but then there's also this other thing that we have to talk about and we wanna finish. And um, would, it, would it make sense to have maybe a small group of people that kind of do the first pass of these and then submit that to the working group just for like a final check? Like, I wouldn't mind going through some of the old metrics and adding in like some of our new disclaimers and our new, you know, template information and just kind of reading through and refreshing and then giving it to the working group for maybe just like a one, like 10 minute, 15 minute thing. I would, I would like to help you with that. I actually like doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah I don't mind it either. <laughs> like, I, I, it makes me feel productive. I don't know. Yeah, I like, well, I, I, like yeah. when we worked on like aligning the repository structures remember like there was a yeah. bit of work on that like it's kind of satisfying when it's all done nice and clean. yeah everything's kind of parallel with everything else and so i wouldn't mind helping you in that regard would you want to do that async matt or do you want to yeah set up we could do it async i mean we could probably just track it through the spreadsheet you know yeah. and i'm thinking of you know the working groups that i'm most heavily involved in like maybe you and I can talk offline but like yeah. common I kind of know what's going on in common because I'm there a lot value I'm there a lot DEI I mean, I think, I'm there a lot I know yeah. in risk risk and evolution we we did exactly as Sophia described we just kind of gunned it to the metrics release and are going to come back to it hey, Elizabeth if you you and I could do it that'd be great because it'd be great to like yeah. bring it to common and say we looked at whatever the 15 yeah, metrics that have been released yeah. 13 look pretty good you know what i mean yeah and two probably could use a little so would the working groups then not do the reviews as they've been doing them they that, they, they would wait until they get like a memo from me and elizabeth a memo yeah and, and it would at least have gone through that first pass of our eyes so that it's not so much of starting from scratch you know from us you know does that make sense yeah no, that I mean, I think that's great. If if you all are interested, are you in gonna that, are you I gonna work on those? It. Are you gonna work on those together, or are you going to assign individual metrics? I think they're gonna review them somehow. They'll work out between themselves, if I'm getting yeah. correctly, and yeah. then we'll get a memo if we need to address something as yeah. a working group. I'm totally gonna send you a memo. By the way, <laughs> yeah, I do. I want like now that you've said it twice, either. you're getting it. Uh, oh, I want a memo. Yeah. I, What's yeah, your fax I, number? Oh God. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you can fax something to my iPhone. I don't know. Shouldn't you be able to? So, so if you. Uh, 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 go ahead, Kevin. I was just going to uh, volunteer my assistance on that task if uh, if Matt and Elizabeth would uh, would like it. So I have a I have. A, I think I have a fair, uh, a high level of uh, uh, knowledge about uh, all of the metrics and together and possibly how they kind of relate together. So I can, I can usually tell when a uh, metric needs to uh, reference another metric or if we're dealing with similar topics and metrics, for example. Welcome, Kevin. <laughs> Welcome to the team. <laughs> Open arms, we will bring you in. So are we going to add something like a, I was thinking a column on the spreadsheet for every every um, list that just says like last review on something like that? Yeah, we have to track it somehow in the spreadsheet. Yeah, I think we, the didn't we add it. that? Oh, we added yeah. a version. Yes, yeah, there is a, there's a, a version date or a review date that is a part of the metrics template now. Okay. Yeah, the metrics template. And then, um, but what you're saying, Matt, is to put it in the spreadsheet also of date of last review. That would be convenient. Uh, but depends it depends on the overhead required to do that. I'm maintaining have, that date in two places then. That's the only uh, thing. I have added it in the metric, which I released like in all four, uh, three working groups. At the bottom, I added this disclaimer this metric was last reviewed in this meeting and for this release. That's a good place to have it. Yeah, that is that is part of the template. Yep. It might be helpful to have it here just so we could do a quick check and see if there's any that pop up or like sort on that or I don't know. I don't want to mess up the spreadsheet though. We can think about it. 
we don't have to decide today. All right. Well, this, the spreadsheet's a planning document, so I think it's uh, it's completely fair to add dates to the planning document to help us uh, figure out when we need to review them again or. Uh, I will put maybe. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and move on because we do have some other things to discuss. So if y'all don't care. Uh, I think we've discussed this enough. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Okay, so in the DEI badging, team we are going to have a virtual dei badging celebration for a couple of reasons um, we want to first off just acknowledge and celebrate our reviewers who volunteer their time to review incoming applications for a dei event badge um, and we also um, it's the two-year anniversary of it so um, we just want to celebrate and bring everybody together and hang out so we have a doodle poll if you don't mind filling this out uh, at your convenience we would love to have you there um we are a little bit limited on the time frames only because we're also trying to work out what works best for the reviewers themselves so um if you can't make any of those i'm really sorry um but we love you anyway and we would still like it if you could come so yeah thank you and by the end of the week if you can do that that'd be great okay next one um GSOC ideas. Um, we did get a <coughs> is today the last day, Sean, for those? Yeah, um, no. Well, we got an email from Google that we hadn't put many projects up there yet over the weekend, and they needed them by the end of day yesterday. So okay. um, we made sure that happened. And uh, we will get all these um, ideas. Then, yeah. And Amazing. I cleaned up some. We had, a, we had like two GSOC ideas. Markdown documents, one with uppercase I, one with lowercase I. It was confusing. So I just fixed all that. Okay, perfect. Junk too. So actually we do not we don't need any more ideas then. Should I change? I, should I change. think Google will I, I okay. think Google will pitch a fit if we have add ideas now. Okay. <laughs> so do not add because <laughs> the time has passed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I, they wanted them so that they could review our application as an organization. So um, presumably adding some now feels wrong. Do the, uh, do the micro tasks need to be completed at this time or, or micro do, tasks we, do we just are as, need the ideas? So at, the, at this time, I, I, I have micro tasks. The micro tasks should be in there. I don't think they're going to, but I, they go in the issue that you create. So you can just edit the text of the issue and there are, if you look at the other ones that are in there, I think they all have micro tasks associated with them. And you could just look at the, the example. The, the micro tasks are usually fairly straightforward. For the website knowledge base one, I don't know what you would do for a micro task, honestly. I have some ideas and I've already created the mm -hmm. issue for it and I put a link in the idea. However, the, my question is when, when do we need to have those micro tasks? Uh, as soon as created. possible, because Google's looking through our stuff right now. Okay, so they that is needed right now as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I will do that today. Thank you. Uh, actually, Elizabeth, I mean, I don't, I don't think they'll get. I mean, I don't know how deep they're going, but they messaged me that we hadn't didn't have many tasks up there or didn't have any projects identified over the weekend. So, I sort of implies they're they're looking right now, right? Kevin, do you need my help in that? Yeah, do you want to chat real quick after this meeting? Sure. Okay. All right. Okay, I think we're good then on the GSOC stuff. So we will go on to our weekly update from a working group. And this week, we are talking to the risk working group. So Sean, let us know or, what's going on. Or Sophia, do you want to take this? <laughs> That's the book. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> um, so we do have a release candidate. I think we did have one very yes. tiny um, because there is a factual mistake yeah. um, coming back in one of the 
foundation references. I think there had been a renaming. So I believe that was submitted as well as we had a new metric. Um, I didn't even like what it's called. I just know it's had oh, default. Defect uh, in it. <laughs> um, it's defect resolution time is, um, our, so is our new metric. Yeah, and the more that we've discussed this metric, the more that I think it would be a nice combination or should be involved in the metrics models discussion um, because just looking at something like defect or bug resolution time, which in our case, we're, we're phrasing the metric as sort of a, a responsiveness element. Like if you're working with a project, are they being responsive to bugs and fixing them, which is a good sign of whether or not the project is more or less stable or more or less risky for your organization. But looking at that metric in isolation without sort of operational indicators like how many people are involved or how issue how quickly are PRs or issues being picked up or tracked in general so that you know what anything with a defect or bug label on it is in comparison to those broader operational metrics and gives you a better sense of the project and whether or not this is a real like a something that actually holds real value or real a real number. I don't know. It's, a, it's hard being a phrase because it's often like you can fabricate numbers out of anything. Um, yeah. And so the more we discussed it, we were like, hey, this would potentially be a good fit for our metrics model. So I know I haven't really been involved in this conversation, but um, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, the met, the metric as we specify it is very. Oh, it has to be interpreted, and somebody in a project has to determine when. What is the what is the birth of a defect from the perspective of the project, and we discuss that at length, and it's when the project is made aware of it through some kind of issue or notification. Right, that's what we settled on, Sophie, isn't it? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, because because there there could be mm -hmm. multiple disclosures that happen, but if they don't happen to the project directly, then there's no there's nothing to track it against. So it's really when the issue becomes aware to them and how quickly those things are addressed. So that's been consuming the last couple of meetings that we've had. Uh, so I don't, I, I don't know where we're going next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think we might, we, our next meeting is March 10th. So if Matt and Elizabeth are gonna, with Kevin pivot to look at the review the old metrics, I think we'll just kind of look at our queue of metrics to build and keep going probably. I think that sounds fair. Thanks, Sophia. They're kind of a rambling update, but oh, I was rambling <laughs> as if I'd have given it, so you've spared us all. I thought it was great, Sophia. You did wonderful. Yes. Uh, any That's questions for said. Sophia or Sean or anyone in the risk working group or comments? Okay. Um, number five. Okay. I had a question. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I was looking at something. But um, where are you all at with the dependency work right now? Because I'm thinking about how that might kind of roll over into the metrics model stuff. Like we, we've released um, three dependency-based metrics that I think we collectively consider the core. There are more on our agenda but I think we viewed them as less critical than the initial three that we released. Okay. And Augur has those three implemented. I can't speak to Grimoire Lab. Okay. Thanks. Matt, what were you thinking for metrics models? Um, there's just, there's always kind of this discussion about like thinking about the larger position that a project sets in and dependency seem like they would sort of play an important role in sure. that. Increasingly, so, yes. That's all. You just, sorry, this is a little bit of a left turn. Um, did you see the census report that came out of the LF this week? I, yeah, I heard about it. I, I haven't looked it. at yeah. it. But, yep. So there, the more I look at it, the more I want to dig into the methodology they used to attribute a value or z-score to the individual packages, but they basically try to create a standard approach to assess the overall value and usage of a package and prominent package ecosystems and hosting sources. So it's, it potentially is 
the most like it's most comprehensive report like that that I've seen at an industry level versus by a company or by a specific product or project area. Um, so sorry, I, I'm I'm bringing it up because I think if we're talking about this in terms of metrics models, then we are going to have to take the bigger view of it and how how it's not just identifying dependencies is what you do with that information and in their case they're prescribing a, a value or a level of importance on things that i think it would be interesting to see if we could i don't want to say borrow their methodology but like investigate whether or not it would make any sense for our own context um that we can tap on kate and the risk working group given that we have a we have an insider who worked on this uh, with Kate and David Wheeler, so the risk working group can take that on. Um, but I'd be, I'd be interested to see if that's applicable at all to what you're, what you're trying to accomplish, Matt. I I have the report up now, so I'll take a look at it in more detail. Matt, yeah, sorry, it's on, it's on. That, sorry, that report. Um, the URL makes it look like that's from 2020. Oh, yeah, because because yeah, I'm being thanked for generating reports that I did for the the first report. It does say course census two vulnerabilities in the core, but this looks like it's from, it's, this is like the link seems to be. Sorry, let me, let me. There's no date on it is the thing. So you can't really. Yeah, I recently read this report because someone sent it to me and then I couldn't find a date on it. And I just assumed from the URL that maybe it was from 2020. I think it, there were, like, like I saw. There were two. There was one in 2020 that was focused just on the Linux kernel. The one that just came out is everything. They're trying, they looked across, they pulled 500 from each source they looked at for like things like MPN and, Ma and Maven. Um, sorry, is, I'm gonna see if I can find the proper is link. That the, is that the PDF? If you open that PDF link I just put in chat, Sophia, you would maybe know if that's the one you've seen. Yeah, cause there's no date anywhere on this document. No. I looked it, for one earlier. And it does look like the like the fact that chaos and I, just put it I am being thanked in this one. I didn't do anything for the most recent report that I'm aware of. <laughs> this is a link from Mike Dolan from February 25th. Oh, that that one's it, the purple one. The one that I yeah. opened. Okay, this is different. The old one. Vulnerabilities in the core is. Oh yeah, I'm registered for this. Yeah, this is on my calendar tomorrow. I don't think there's a PDF out yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I got an early release. Yeah, I thought I had did. published. Yeah, the, I sorry. think the, Okay, we'll the table that until it's public. Sorry. Okay, just delete this whole part of the <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's clear they're gonna do it because we're looking at yeah. a we're looking at a thing. I don't I don't think you let the cat out of it. I hope no one gets mad at me. I spilled some of the beans. I thought it was public. Totally uh, well, it looks like the webinar is tomorrow, so it's like yep. really almost public. And so when Don, uh, I'm probably I'm probably not gonna be able to go to the webinar, but if somebody could drop a link in Slack or email or something when they do uh, actually release the new new one, I would love to see that. Hey, Sophia, I won't even like post this to the the to YouTube until later. Like, I'll wait just for you. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> just to keep Thank it up. <laughs> um. All right. Well, thank you, though. The Thanks, everybody. Not putting dates on things, Don. I agree with you. They, I don't know why, but research reports don't put dates on things because I think there's probably a fair amount of delay to like when you write it to when things actually get published in what spaces. But like, you should date your work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, leaving that <laughs> ambiguous, and especially since when you go to the census too, which is what I think this would be, it opens up the old census report right now. That's confusing AF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially because I know there's a new one. Yeah. Just not do it. <laughs> but it probably will download the correct report tomorrow when they do the webinar. I hope so. If they do, can you share that? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Um, OK, let's move on. Is it OK? Don, are you going to be around next week in this, at this meeting to do an update? I'm not, but I think I'm sure someone from Common will be there. Maybe Matt or Sean or somebody. Yeah, can can do it. yeah. I'll be at, at the Common meeting. I'll be there. No, oh, this meeting next week. I'll be here this week. Okay. okay. Uh, Matt, that's good. That's a good choice. Y'all can thumb wrestle for it. 
control of the. I don't think we need that. <laughs> we have plenty to do. Um, okay. Thank you guys for um, volunteering for that. Um, number six is we want to make sure people know that we are going to try to do a chaos con in conjunction with OSSEU, which is September 13th to 16th in Ireland. Hooray. And I see someone wrote woo. Yes, 100% um, woo. Um, there is a CFP. If you are um, wanting to fill that out, I think it's down here somewhere. Yeah, right in here is the CFP. So submit something if you would like to do that. If you want to do more than just attend, uh, well, that's a CFP for, for Open Source Summit. We still need to open a CFP for Chaos oh, Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Matt's, yeah. Matt's yeah. working on basically getting us a room is the biggest uh, thing. Yeah, I'm working on it right now. <laughs> uh, I mean, we got it. We're on this kind of early for us, so I think we're good. Yeah. And if not, eh, we'll figure it out. You guys can come to my house and we'll hang out in Ohio. It'll be great. There are at least suspect, I don't know where the venue is exactly, but there are a number of universities right in that area as well that yeah. I've worked with in the past that are pretty easy to get. Rooms yeah, at. I've got, I can get us a room at University College Dublin. I have several friends there. Last time we did it at a university though, Angela was a little offended that we didn't do it at the venue, I think. Yeah, I, yeah I'm yeah, happy. Then, yeah, then I'm happy to do it at the venue. Right yeah. <laughs> it's easier to do it at the venue. For sure. I think I think the time that we did it at the university, it's because they wouldn't give us. They wanted to charge us like four thousand or five thousand dollars for a room. We were talking to the wrong people. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, we did talk to the. Yeah. Okay, so it's mostly just to like put that in the like plant that little seed in everybody's brain that that's going to be trying to happen. So, um, okay, let's move on. We got a little bit of time left. Um, quick update, uh, She Code Africa, they have um, uh, their own mentorship program called Con Contribute Contributhon. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but um, we are, we did submit for that. We have an idea about doing a newcomer bot in our newcomer channel um, that would uh, welcome people to, that come into the channel and um, give them resources right off the bat, because right now a lot of that's just manual. So um, we want to try to streamline that process a little bit. So we will let you all know if we get accepted into that. And we have multi multi mentors for that since none of us could do it full time. There's four of us that are going to split the mentorship <laughs> on that, which is is good. I do, I think it'll work out great. So that'll be good. Um, oh, Matt C. In case you had not heard this, um, Christy Progri, who is in the DEI working group and also on our DEI audit team, she's also going to help with that as well. She's over in Albania, so her time zone also will be a little more friendly, and Ruth too, time zone a little more friendly for that. Okay, um, the last 14 minutes we have, um, let's talk about forums. We've talked about this so many times, but it's come up again. It's been and a it's while. Like a good time We're back to around. Talk about it again. Um, it did resurface in, I believe it was the Asia Pacific call. Is that right? Yes. I believe that is uh, correct. We were just talking about uh, mailing lists and et cetera, et cetera. And this came up as a, as a way to kind of help with newcomers and the, um, the, the wide variety of places where information is found. So, um, and this is a little more sustainable and because, and no, that, that's not the right word. Um, it saves the data a little better. It's a little easier to find information than searching through a mailing no. list archives or Slack conversations that go away because we don't have the pro level slack ours will get deleted eventually so um yeah what do we feel about this how do what do we think i can restate my position on forums and mailing lists um i i actually have no strong preference either way but we i think we have to pick one we can't have a forum and, and a mailing, a mailing list. list because what happens is you have mailing list people and then you have forum people and you just end up with two parallel conversations on similar topics and then the two never never actually meet. Um, as an old person who does a lot of email though, I would like a forum that has email integration in case we need that. Um, but last time, last time we had this discussion um, in the big meeting, I think that there were enough people that felt strongly about the mailing, keeping the mailing list that we decided not to go with the forum. 
but I do think forums in general are kind of more accessible. It gives people more options. Maybe, maybe it's time to make that make it's that certainly leap. Easier but I think if we make that too. leap, we need to shut down the mailing list. That's my it's easier. Yeah, I agree with you, John. It, and I think the the discussion forums have the advantage of being archival and let people find old discussions. So we're not repeating the same discussions. And I think we're at the point where part of the you know, part of the things that I think we are thinking about with the knowledge base part of that set of stuff can probably be addressed through, you know, having forums with the right titles and preserving that discussion. And I, I do think it's important to have it be a, the kind of forum like sustain uses where you just subscribe, you can subscribe to it and get the emails if you want. Uh, so I, I think a, a discourse forum also kind of works in a similar fashion to slack so i think if we if we're if we're gonna do the uh the discourse forum i think it's it's not only getting rid of the uh the email list i think i think we should have a discussion about getting rid of slack as well i, I don't think uh, and i and i tend to i agree with uh with everything don said earlier uh having having too many platforms uh is a transparency issue so it it excludes people from the from the discussion. So I think we need to be really careful when we're adopting new technology and make how sure we act, need it. How active is our mailing list? Not very active at all since Slack came around. Yeah, because I mean, like if, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people will complain if we just like, for example, just shut it down. Um, and I mean, I, so, I guess that would be my preference if, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the of forums in general, like whatever the platform is. Uh, and if there aren't going to be too many complaints about the mailing list, I mean, I, I do see the emails, but I rarely read them because I, I get the same information on Slack or somewhere else or at, at this meeting. Um, and, and I slightly disagree on Slack versus like forum. I think they're slightly different, they're slightly different conversations happen. I think Slack or, uh, I mean, those chat-like platforms is more for real-time conversations. I think it's more social. Mm -hmm. um, it, whereas like the forums and mailing lists are more for asynchronous communication. Yeah, I would agree like that. I would agree with that. I wouldn't. I don't actually see it replacing Slack because, you know, a lot of us get mailing lists and forums in more digest format. So we get notified, you know, once a day or something, if there's anything new, whereas with Slack, if somebody has a question for me, I'm going to see it right away. Whereas if somebody posted on the mailing list, I'm probably not going to see it for a couple of days. And I would add that if somebody posts the mailing list, if we take away the mailing list right now, I don't think anyone's going to notice, honestly. And if we took away Slack right now, I think the community would break because it's where all the communication is happening right now. I mean, we slowly will redirect it toward the forum, but um, I don't think you can take Slack away. <laughs> but you can, I think we can't take the mailing list away because it's it's at this point, I think, fairly non-essential. And, and for the mailing, mailing list, Matt, just refresh my memory. We never upgraded to the new platform, right? This is still on oh. the old mailman. Yep. 1975 technology or <laughs> yes. I get more emails, that's the year, to, manage, right? I more emails to manage yeah. discards than I do honestly, like actual yeah. things to the list. Yeah. Honestly. There's a message that needs to be discarded. I get like three a day. Yeah. I spend more time with the list on that. I'm um, glad you were the one doing that, Matt, because I get those emails too. And by the time I get there, they've already been done. So so. Sick of looking at them. I'm like, I'm just doing this right now. <laughs> It's like coffee and discards. <laughs> so if we if we were to do a platform like Discourse, we could do like Slack would integrate with Discourse, and that would that would resolve some of the issues I have with separate channels. So it would pull it would pull Slack into that Discourse channel. Uh, so so maybe a, a chat integration is is what we would do there. I would. I would hmm. Do you have an example of that? I don't think I've seen. There are oh, some communities yeah. that that broadcast like something's been posted on Discourse. I mean, that's I've seen that, but um, I, I don't know, Kevin, if you're thinking of something different. But this, yeah, posting Slack to a discussion forum, like a lot of times, I'm just answering quick questions that don't have context. I don't know if 
I want that. I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know. I don't know if I want my Slack conversations archived because I'm not sure they're as helpful as a discussion forum. Well, it could just be a channel that you don't yeah. even have to. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. the other thing I do in my community is if I see a conversation in Slack that's worth saving uh, into the knowledge base, I'll export it to this course. Hey, this is a recipe, good recipe that somebody found. And I, I happened to run across in Slack. Uh, so it allows me to sort of export it and, and, and keep that uh, conversation. Um, but yeah, I mean, so that's definitely doable. It's a little clunky, but it's actually kind of cool. Like, but like just a channel that's a discourse channel that's easy enough to just mute or yeah. subscribe to. I, yeah. I, I, but I've seen like some communities, I mean, I, I think it's a little noisy. Like somebody posted a question on discourse. It's a reminder for somebody to go go answer it or respond to it, but- I gotcha. Yeah, that, that's a little noisy, but exporting like the conversation you want to preserve in slack i mean i think that's actually kind of cool i use it like i i would export like a one thread a week for example that i find interesting all right well mail list getting no love today yeah no I, I think <laughs> that is times okay have, times have changed um i i do have a um like I went ahead and I think so. If we get real technical here for a second, we can do a hosted instance for a hundred dollars a month, which seems like the smart thing to do. Of hosted discourse of what discourse? Okay. Um, and if we want to experiment with it, I we just have to ask the LF. Did, did they have a discount for open source projects? I don't remember. They didn't uh, offer it to me, but basically we need to LF to add a DNS entry according to this. I okay. wouldn't be terribly surprised if when we kind of take a look at the website mm -hmm. as a whole this summer, this will kind of fall in there that we're going to move to our own hosting anyway, just off of the LF infrastructure altogether. Well, no, this, this is a L LF owns our domain chaos.community yeah but brian they're they'd be willing to work with us okay yeah. yeah but could i mean we could i'm just saying we could ask them and just give it a give it a trial run if we're unsure yeah, we could um, i just i always we seem always and rightfully so kind of low on the list of yeah help sometimes okay do we want to do a soft no that would be bad i was gonna say do we want to do a soft launch but we don't want to have all these multiple conversations. Yeah, like, we want to. We want the mailing list to do an auto responder that says that refers people no. to the discourse yeah. site for a few yeah. months. I could look at that. I don't know how to do that, but it's probably not that hard. Yeah, I, I, it's probably not. We could keep uh, the primary mailing list and flip it over to announcements only, so that only a handful of people can post to it, and we could use it to post like. <laughs> just big announcements and that gives us an email channel for, for that like here's our new metrics release yep yeah plus one to that okay yeah so it looks like they offer like 85 discount to nonprofits and educational institutions oh well how can we, we just yeah you just need to contact them yeah there's a here's a pricing page and okay. then you, you you do get a 14 day free trial if you want to just experiment for a couple of weeks which i opened up and i would need yeah. the dns entry for us to play with but yeah if we want to go this way and i i do think just it's not infrastructure we want to maintain in terms of updating discourse as an open source project on a server and all that i think even at a hundred dollars a month it's a deal to not have the headache of administering it yeah i agree just have a credit card ready. Or right, yeah, they ask you for that on the free trial. So yeah. But yeah, I'll go back. I can go back and look. I didn't obviously Elizabeth and I were just chatting before the call and I looked it up. Um, I have I a question about nonprofit uh, pricing. The way it's worded though, um, I'm not sure if so so what it says is if you're legally recognized as a nonprofit organization that is exempt from federal taxes. We offer a 50% discount. Does that mean 501c3 
because Lovely. I think the Linux Foundation, isn't the Linux Foundation a 501c6? Um, so the Linux Foundation might not qualify for that nonprofit discount. No, but I would qualify uh, as an academic. <laughs> I'm going to apply for the discount. Something to think about too is what we do with all of that historical knowledge that is in the mailing list archives right now. Is there a way to like export that and re-import it back into discourse? Does anyone know? We have the archives. And if I don't shut down the list, kind of to Don's point, I'm guessing those archives will stay there. Okay. Okay, just so they aren't lost forever in the wind when we pull the plug. Yep. Because you know me, I like to keep everything, so. <laughs> I can't get rid of them. I have to savor the... I'll print them all out for you and bring them <laughs> no. to you next time I see you. <laughs> Please do that. Just staple in the corner. It'll be fine. I have, actually, I have a three ring exactly. binder. Exactly, I'll fax them yes. to you. Fax them yeah, to you. I a talk about faxing earlier. I'll put them in my binder for, for future. All right, any final, we have two minutes. So any final comments on the discourse? It sounds like we're all kind of in the same place. Sounds like well, it. We're, so are we gonna try the trial and ask for the DNS entry from LF? Or are we gonna wait for LF to give us control of our domain? We can ask for the DNS, or, yeah, stuff. Then we can play around with it. Then when we are ready to do it, where we've at least played with it. Yeah, and maybe put some structure around it. Mm -hmm. Brian, Ward, I think we yeah. should. I think we should. Uh, so I, I think we should just take a teeny, teeny, tiny step back. Um, yeah, sure. I say this a lot, but yeah. I do think we should get a few people together who have lots of experience with forums and talk about exactly how we want to architect this. Yeah. Because I'm otherwise, we'll end up with too many or too few groups um, mm -hmm. within within the forums. So we should we should figure that out and be deliberate about what it is that we think we need to start and how mm -hmm. we're gonna grow that over time. But I also think that we should clarify with the Linux Foundation whether or not we're going to qualify for that discount. And um, if not, mm -hmm. figure out where we're gonna get the budget for that $100 a month. And just do that due diligence before we yeah. spin this up and everybody loves it. And then all of a sudden we can't pay for it. Yeah, if I remember um, correctly, it's been a while, but I mean, there was at least one community at the at one project on the LF that was using this course. Um, so if we, we can ask Brian, like if, what kind of pricing mm -hmm. plan they're I'll under. I can send that yeah. right now. I think, I think it was actually Hyperledger, if I remember correctly, that was using this course. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that those are good questions to ask. And as far as the where the hundred dollars is going to come from, I mean, for the next year at least, I'm, I have it covered. We have it covered with our research grant for like a year and a half, really. Yeah, right. and I agree with uh, I agree with Don like including like, you know, when we launch, like what, how many and what categories or, or yeah. topics that we're going to have, for example, I think that's I totally sort of agree with that. Yeah. good thing to discuss because we don't want to just launch it with, you know, just general topic that that's sort of the default that comes along, but mm -hmm. we want to be mindful about, you know, you know, let's start with these and then, and see how it goes. And you actually also want people to actually start using them because you don't want to just launch it and have crickets, right? Yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen communities going too far in both directions. So there's one community that I, I got pulled into right after they'd set up all of their mailing lists, and they set up like 50 mailing lists for a brand new project, oh my and God. only only like three of them were ever used for anything. Um, but they had set up they had set up mailing lists for like each individual subcomponent of this project, and it was just a gigantic again a gigantic waste. Um, and then on the other hand, people just create a general one, which just gets so full of stuff that you can't find anything. And so we need, we just need to think about where we want to balance that, at least to start. Yeah, I'd, I'd sign up to participate in that discussion with you and whomever else is. We may want to extend that. We may want to extend that conversation to uh, Slack channels as well, because we we have a lot of Slack channels. <laughs> Somebody's been pruning them, though. I mean. I know. Yeah. But we also keep on creating them. Yeah. 
We do. Uh, whether they're used or not, we are creating. I am the creator, Matt is the destroyer. <laughs> at, at GitLab, we have Slack more, channels. Yeah, at GitLab, at one point, we had more channels than employees. <laughs> <laughs> I want my own channel. Just, yeah. just to chat that with was, IT guy was telling me that story, and that wasn't. It wasn't really that funny when he told me that. But. <laughs> we're laughing at your pain, Ray. I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, it wasn't like, I didn't even know there were like scuba diving channels, for example, right? I mean, good for yeah. them, but. Yeah. What's that doing on my work Slack? I would like to see like a pet Slack channel so I can just drop in pictures of my dogs all day long. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I've had that too. And, at, and at VMware, we actually have, it's, it's, an, it's called Adorbs is the channel. So cute kids, yeah. cute pets, yeah. like it's not, not just cats, not just dogs. You can, anything adorable can go into that channel. I'm all about that. Plus one, subscribe. Yes. <laughs> I'm in it. All right. We are actually out of time, over time. So uh, thanks everybody. Great discussions, great productivity. You can all take the rest of the days off. Um, you're good. So okay. thanks everyone. And we'll see you here. Same time, same place next week. Sounds good. Thank you. Have a good Bye, one. Everybody. Bye. Bye.